Good morning, everyone. My name is Itzel Martinez, and I serve as the Student Government Association President, and I will be the moderator for this forum. On behalf of the Student Government Association, we would like to thank you for being here with us and welcome you to our home. We would like to thank all the candidates for taking the time to speak to our TSC family and our community. In attendance, we have Mr. Charlie Kabler, Mr. Tony Martinez, and Mr. Trey Mendez. Before we begin the forum, we would kindly ask the candidates to adhere to the following guidelines. Each candidate will be given three minutes for the opening statement at the beginning of the forum. We ask that you wait to be called upon. Each candidate will have two minutes to respond to the questions from the audience. Candidates will hear a single bell during their response, indicating their 15, minute sec 15 seconds are almost over. Candidates will hear a double bell during their response, indicating their time has expired. Each candidate will be given two minutes for a closing statement at the end of the forum. We ask that you wait to be called upon. We will now begin with the opening statements. Opening statements will be conducted alphabet in alphabetical order. Please help me welcome our first candidate, Mr. Charlie Kabler. Good morning. My name is Charlie Kabler. I uh, am a proud graduate of Texas Southmost College, 1977-1978. Uh, before I graduated from college. I am a long time Br Brownsville resident, been here all my life. I uh, graduated from the Brownsville Independent School Districts, first class home Hannah in 1975, and proceeded to come here for school. I uh, have been a public servant all my life, uh, served with the Brownsville Police Department for 24 years before I moved down to City Hall uh, and as assistant city manager and then uh, city manager for 14 years until I retired in 2017. I uh, am fulfilling my dream. I prepared myself for this uh, position of mayor of the city of Brownsville. I feel that I am well qualified. I understand our community. I have lived the life in Brownsville. I have traveled throughout every uh, neighborhood in our city. I understand our people. I believe that I can sit down with them at any time and communicate and do the best I can to achieve their goals. As students of this school, I believe that we are always questioned about the idea that a lot of you graduate and move on to other communities because of the lack of viable jobs in Brownsville. We need to work with our Greater Brownsville Incentive Corporation, our Brownsville Community Improvement Corporation, to assure that you all have the best possible opportunity to work in our city and fulfill your dream and your profession. We believe we can do that. There's positive news as we speak in relation to the fact that we can get some of the students to start uh, preparing themselves for viable jobs. Uh, of course, we all speak of SpaceX. I was on the SpaceX board for uh, three or four years. I understand the importance of SpaceX and the fact that some of you may want to work in that profession. Uh, and that, of course, will allow a lot of you to stay in Brownsville and work in Brownsville. But whatever your interest is in life, we need to work with you. We need to have you come to the uh, municipal courts, to the city of Brownsville departments, work with us as you are graduating, become part of us, obtain experience with us, uh, whatever we can do to allow as many people to succeed in life, and the more people that succeed in life, the best possible city we're going to have. So I encourage you to make a viable decision as you select the next mayor of the city of Brownsville, because I promise you one thing, I will be with you on a daily basis, visible, and offer you all the opportunity to, to speak to me at any time. God bless. Thank you, Mr. Kabler. Our next candidate is Mr. Tony Martinez. As a reminder, Mr. Martinez, you as well has three minutes. Good morning, and um, my first thought is thank you uh, for being here. 
Um, you're a special audience in the sense that you, be, you really belong in the category of what is the future of, of our city. And this election is all about that. Um, I have had the good fortune of being your mayor for the last eight years. So I really have uh, the capability of telling you what we've done. And so the things that I'm going to tell you about allows me to say we have a proven record of what we're doing. And with that, I would like to be able to serve as your next mayor for the next four years. The first thing I'd like to uh, bring to your attention is that um, you are in a position uh, probably as good as any other generation has been to be able to get the kind of work that you want right here in Brownsville. Um, what you're about to hear with the liquid natural gas and with the SpaceX industry um, is that you're going to become available jobs this September, uh, approximately about 3,000 new jobs. Uh, that will be coming to the area. What we can tell you is that there's two ways to obtain that employment. And what we have learned is over the years, we all think about the education, we think about the job training, we think about a lot of things. Well, you guys have told us in all the studies that we've done thus far is you want to get an education that's meaningful, you want to make a difference in this world, and so we want to train you and we want to make you ready to step into a job that you have been educated for or trained for. And that's our objective, because you're going to have the jobs here. It's not a promise, it's a reality. And so therefore, what we do right now in this election is extremely important because you guys are the ones that are probably going to be affected the most. So all the job opportunities are there. The educationals that you get here at TSC, this wonderful educational process, and Adela as your chair, and Trey as one of your trustees, uh, they're doing what they can to afford you the opportunities to get this kind of training. You have UTRGV, who is their partner, and they're working together. You have a board member from BISD at Osmo Castro here, also providing you with the opportunities to get all the education that is required to be successful. So take a look at, at our website. Take a look at what we've done. You've got hike and bike trails. You've got downtown restoration. You've got Rosaka restoration. You've got a lot of great things that are not a promise, but a reality. So come to us. Come help us get elected. We, we, we'd love your vote. We'd like your participation. We'd like your volunteer uh, in our campaign because we, we provide you not only the future that we have, but we will do in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Martinez. Our next candidate is Tr Mr. Trey Mendez. Mr. Mendez, you as well have three minutes. Got to move the microphone down a little bit. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Trey Mendez, and I'm running for, for mayor like these two candidates. Uh, I stand before you here today as a son of Brownsville. Brownsville born, I'm Brownsville raised, and I'm Brownsville proud. And I'm, I'm here also as, as a proud member of the TSC Board of Trustees. And I've had the pleasure of serving as a TSC Board member for the last nine years. And during those nine years, the one thing I've never lost focus of is why we're here, and what exactly, and who exactly it is that we're working for. And that is all of you students that are here in the audience. Uh, I had the pleasure of graduating from here in 2002. So I sat in the same seat you're sitting in. And I had, you know, at that time, I didn't really know what, what it was I was gonna do. But I had uh, an inner drive and I had big dreams and I was fortunate enough to, to have fulfilled some of those. And in my, in my time as a TSC trustee, I've learned, really learned the value of education and, and how much you, you as students will mean to this city. And this election is, is not about me and it's never been about me. It's always been about this city and where we want this city to go and who it is that we want to lead this city and make it the city that we all want it to be and the, all, and the city that we all know it can be. And uh, a lot of this is, is actually for you, for the next generation, for the students that are here now, because in 20 years you're gonna be the ones that are leading the city and you're gonna be the ones that are seeing the fruits of, of the labor of everyone that's up here today and, and everyone that's willing to be a leader and step up 
and, and do the things that need to be done to put Brownsville where it should be. And I, I'm tired of hearing for so long how good McAllen is and how many great things are happening in McAllen. So many great things should be happening in Brownsville and so many great things will happen in Brownsville if we elect the right leadership. Uh, leadership is lacked for the longest time. I think we've had individuals that have been in, in positions, whether that's administration or commissions, that don't really have the right leadership ability to bring people together, to put together a vision and to fulfill that vision and actually have the drive and the ideas and the ability to collaborate with others to get that done. And I, do, I have that and I've done that as a TSC board member. Uh, you know, one thing that we really were faced with when I first came on the board was we had the highest tuitions in the state. Uh, we were double the next closest, three times the state average. So our, our, the trustees got together and said, we've got to fix this. Students aren't, don't have the opportunities, they don't have the accessibility to this institution or an education. And if they don't have that, the community's not going to succeed, we're not going to, we're not going to move forward. So we got together and, and we put together a plan to lower tuitions, which we did. We lowered them uh, 35% in 2013, and we haven't raised them since. We understand it's important to you to, to have an education. So things like that are, are things, I'm a problem solver. I see issues, I, kind of like a doctor in a way. I see uh, diagnosis, I see the symptoms, and, and we figure out a way to, to fix it. So I'm asking for your vote. I'm asking to be the, the next leader of this city, and with you, we can get that done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mendez. At this moment, we will open the floor to questions from our TSC family and community. We kindly ask that you limit your participation to one question per audience member. For your convenience, there has been two mics set up at each end of the aisle. Candidates, as a reminder, each candidate will have two minutes to respond to each question. We will begin with Mr. Martinez for the first question and rotate, giving each candidate a chance to respond. We will start on this side. Hi, good morning. Um, this question is for all candidates. If elected, what would be your first priority as mayor? Mr. I, Martinez? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? I, if it, elected, what would be your first priority as mayor? Oh wow, that's a, that's a good question. Um, there are so many different priorities, but right now I, I think in order to accommodate um, the growth as we, we know it to be, uh, I think one of the first priorities would have to be uh, the East Loop, which would be a transportational situation. Uh, we have um, had that on the books for a long, long time, and we're on the brink of making that a reality. Uh, that's, that, that would help your congestion in, in your downtown. I think the second thing that would also be right up there uh, would have to be to figure out exactly we're, I mean, we are now touting ourselves as the next space city, which, and rightfully so. I think we've had a lot of experts and consultants talk to us, and that this is going to happen within our confines. So now we have to figure out how to reach out to all of you and all the other students who are eligible at this particular point in their time to fill those jobs. How do you train them? How do you educate them? And how do you start, even at the level of the BISD, to, so that by the time you come to TSC, you are prepared to take over all those things because what happens is you've got a lot of jobs coming. That was something that we, 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 we've had a lack of and, and they're here. They're, they're going to be here. They're here for you. They're here for everyone else who wants to take advantage of it. So getting the student body and getting the young people ready and prepared to meet those job requirements I think probably hangs right in there with the logistics and how you deal with any of the transportation needs that we have within the city. Thank you, Mr. Martinez. Mr. Mendez, same question. Okay, thank you. Uh, thanks for the question. I think uh, the first thing I would do is put together a strategic plan for the city. Uh, I spoke to, I've spoken to the city manager now, and the deputy city manager, and the deputy city, city manager, when she accepted the job, uh, called up the, the city manager and said, hey, uh, I'm looking for the strategic plan for the city. Where is it? He said, well, th there isn't one. And that to me is, is really scary, and it's really shocking that um, we, the city's been operating with a $150 million budget uh, for years without a strategic plan, without a real uh, thought process as to how they're going to grow and how they're going to meet the needs of the city. And I'm talking about a five-year plan, 10-year plan, 20-year plan. Uh, but in the immediate, you know, that, that's something that day one we got to get working on as, as a commission and as an administration. 
Uh, that to me is fundamental, and I'm really surprised that it hasn't been done and that it doesn't exist. Uh, all other entities have a strategic, uh, strategic plan. Um, as far as my you know, other priorities I'd like to see, I'd like to see some, some uh, improvement to the uh, small business development in the city. Uh, for, for the longest time, I've heard issues. I've gone through my own issue. Uh, I'm a, the owner of a uh, co-owner of a pizza restaurant downtown, uh, Dodici, and during that during that whole entire ordeal, I, I had it really opened my eyes as to as to how we need to streamline that process and how we need to digitize it because there's so many opportunities that are being left on the table. People get tired, they get frustrated, they give up, and they're not able to open that business. And if we're not having people opening businesses, we're not bringing revenue into the city. And if we don't have a, a strategic plan, we don't even know what it is we're going to do or how to direct and hold people accountable within our city. So I think that's fundamental for me. And uh, aside from that, public safety is a huge issue. Uh, that, oh, 15 seconds? Okay. Um, public safety is a huge issue. We need to increase the amount of officers, firefighters, first responders, so that I'm fortunate enough that I live around the corner from a, from a fire station, but I want everybody else to have that same security of knowing that they're going to be safe and their families are going to be safe. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mendez. Mr. Cobbler? Same question. Thanks for the question. I, 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 uh, it's a very good question, and I appreciate uh, the, the responses from my, from my two fellow uh, candidates. Uh, obviously, infrastructure and, and the first impression of a city when people come here is, is, is very important to us. Obviously, there's projects that are occurring as we speak that are going to make our city and enhance our city. For example, the airport and things like that. And when I was city manager, uh, those projects were initiated, of course, yeah, well, job opportunities is one of the main things we need to start looking at. Uh, uh, the construction of roads, the East Loop, as noted by, by, the, by the mayor, is, is viable to us because that is something that will keep 18-wheelers out of the city of Brownsville. As you recall, it used to be that the street, the 18-wheelers the, uh, would go right through all the way to the uh, Gateway Bridge, and now we will have an opportunity to have them go from from the BNM Bridge, I mean, from Gateway Bridge to uh, the Port of Brownsville and vice versa without interfering with traffic and the materials that they carry. Uh, we're very proud of the fact that we started, we worked on Morrison Road, worked with owners of those, and got Morrison Road done to allow traffic to flow in, in a better way. Plus, job opportunities, the creation of viable businesses in that area occurred because Morrison Road was open and made it Made, gave the opportunity to uh, viable business people to open up their businesses. And if you go see Morrison Road right now, it is, it is a wonderful location for viable types of all types of business, whether small or large. And I will want to be and will be a full-time mayor to address any and all issues that are occurring as we speak, including uh, the permitting process and things like that. Uh, I was there. I worked with it. And I know I can handle it in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way that will allow people to handle the op their opportunities to create uh, a, their dream come true, which is business in our community. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Cabler. Moving on to our second question on this side of the aisle. This question is for all candidates. How do you plan on growing businesses and jobs in Brownsville? We will start with Mr. Mendez. Okay, thanks. Um, you heard part of it, uh, small business process. The buildings department and the permitting department needs to be streamlined. Um, like I said, the, the, you have individuals that have been in different departments that may not necessarily be qualified. It, it's kind of a top-down issue where the culture, it, it seems like it doesn't really reflect uh, what it is that our city needs. I don't think that some, some individuals realize the value and the importance of having people open businesses. Uh, other cities are, are doing things that even San Benito, for example, I, I've heard from contractors, even San Benito has a digital process. And um, I hear the same complaints all the time, which is, it takes too long. I talk to somebody different all the time, and they just don't seem to get what it is that I'm trying to do. And if you, if you make it easier, you make it, uh, the process streamlined. My thoughts on that is, is just having somebody responsible for applications and, and the process in general. Uh, have somebody, as when you come in for a permit, you talk to one person and you maintain that same relationship with that same person throughout the process. You're able to check it from your phone. You know what's going on. You know where you are in the process. Also, as far as job creation, uh, a huge part of that is having people in the economic development uh, corporations that, that have the ability to, um, to understand the fundamentals of growth 
how exactly it is that you cultivate business relationships and, and grow them. Uh, we need a strong workforce. That's what the college is here for. I'm really excited that, that we have leadership at the college that knows workforce and understands workforce. And the value of that is if we do that, then, then people don't have to leave Brownsville in order to get a job and in order to, to support their family. And if people stay in Brownsville, they spend their money here, they uh, raise their family here, and um, really are proud of the city. And uh, aside from that, uh, job creation also can be, can be done through tourism, whether that's active tourism or ecotourism or heritage tourism. Uh, we're leaving opportunity, a lot of those opportunities on the table. Uh, people spend a lot of money for that, and Brownsville's missed some of those opportunities. Thanks. Mr. Cameron, same question. Thank you. Well, number one, the city has two entities that get a quarter cent sales tax from the budget. Brownsville, Brownsville Community Improvement Corporation and the and GMB, Greater Brownsville Incentive Corporation. They're responsible to assure that they do everything possible to bring job opportunities to our city. Uh, those people and those, that group should be uh, made up of business people from within our community that understand the business world and can, and can help us and guide us in the right direction in bringing viable business to our city and helping small business uh, owners from our own city that want to open up a business uh, and do everything they can to show them how to get things done and not give them obstacles. I agree with that 100%. Uh, we need someone to assure uh, and work with them on a daily basis that that's being done. Uh, we need to show people how to get things done in our city. And we need to thank them every day for bringing a viable business to our city because they're going to hire people from our city to work there. The more job opportunities, the more people are working, the safer our city is. As a police officer, you, we always knew the more, the more people that were working, being active, getting things done for their family, uh, the less crime we had in our community. That's the way to get things done. But we need to be very helpful assure ourselves that we're out there with the, in the community, getting input from them on a daily basis, uh, getting together with students that are, go, that are uh, projecting a certain profession, sit down with them, get their ideas. The best ideas come from our people because they're living the life, they live in a certain part of the city, uh, they're going to our schools, get the input from them and share. Make sure that you're communicating on a daily basis. Mr. Martinez, same question. Um, yes, in order for you to create the job opportunities, you have to have the people that are going to create the jobs, okay? That's the first thing. So when we became a mayor eight years ago, uh, the different projects that were on the books uh, that were being brought, quite frankly, your 4A and 4B committees are good. One is quality of life and the other one is economic development, um, but it has to stem from the city. So the city management actually has that responsibility. Uh, we looked at it, we saw SpaceX, we saw an industry that has high paying jobs, we have an industry that's um, going to give you a whole system of providers for space, uh, just like they did up in NASA, uh, and, and that's why I tell you this is the next space city to come around. Uh, the, second, the second opportunity we had was a company called Sata, S-A-T-A, which was an Italian company that was formed over 100 years ago. Uh, it is a light manufacturing company. They were the ones that actually first made Fiat's way back when. Now they're doing heavy uh, machinery parts for Caterpillar and John Deere, which is another great uh, opportunity, again, for uh, job opportunities. And what you're trying to look for, if you're looking at a, a true economic picture, you're trying to get high paying jobs because when high paying jobs come around, you're able to afford housing. The second thing is you're able to go to a pizza place and spend the kind of money you have or, or any other place. So you can't have all the service jobs, whether you're working at McDonald's, those are great beginning jobs, but they're not gonna be able to give you the kind of money that you need to do the things that the city actually needs and also pay your property taxes, etc. So. That's really the, the end game is get good jobs, get good education, and get the opportunities for the local folks. Thank you. Moving on to our next question on the other side of the aisle. Go ahead. Hi, this question is for all three of you. So we are starting to see changes in Bronzeville, such as establish, establishments of companies and restaurants. 
What difference can you guys make as a mayor to add to those changes? The first person will start, Mr. Kavler. Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Yes, we are starting to see changes in Brunswick, such as establishments of small companies and restaurants. What difference can you make as a mayor to add to those changes? Well, I, I, I want to be a full-time mayor. I am, and by no means, again, a politician. I want to be there on a daily basis. I feel that we, we did very well in, in working with small business and chain restaurants as they were coming into the city. Remember, for a long time, we did not have a variety of chain restaurants. And uh, we, we came short of uh, obtaining some of them to come to Brownsville. And that's the, that's the critique. However, when we, for example, opened up Morrison Road and allowed Alto Glor, Morrison Road, Ruben Torres to grow, we were able to achieve a huge goal in getting the restaurants to open up in those places. Now, we also moved down to four corners in the area that people thought was going to be really hurt by the development on the west side of the city. And we were able to fulfill that goal. And the way you do it is you call. You, you call these people, you call these restaurants, you sit down with them, you encourage them to come visit Brownsville and, 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 and understand what our population is, what our growth is, how our growth patterns are. Uh, but we were able to do very well. The Four Corners, uh, as you can see, became a viable uh, established location as well. And from there, we worked on with builders to be able to build the area behind uh, the restaurants that you see now. Uh, and those people became friends of the city. They want to develop more. They want to bring more to our city. Uh, they're well uh, financially set to be able to do so. And we need to continue to communicate with them. And it, it is going to grow. The city will grow. Uh, you see the, the conversations we're having with you, uh, with with uh, the opportunities for jobs to come to the city. The, the bigger the city grows, the more opportunity to bring small business and restaurants to our community. Mr. Martinez, same question. Yeah, um, this is this is really a, a good question in the sense of what is it that the community needs, and quite frankly. Uh, what I'm seeing in the Millennials and what we're seeing with all kinds of wonderful people that are having uh, actually their culinary tastes are, are, are changing and are being more variety, uh, a greater variety of things. So um, the approach that, that the city has taken thus far through the 4B is actually um, looking at the quality of life. Okay, In other words, are we going to be taking and looking at whether it's a pizza place and I guess some of you might know I I have the barbecue place of 1848. Somebody says, why 1848? I said, that's when Brownsville was founded. So I give you a history lesson plus good barbecue, okay? <laughs> uh, uh, but the same token is, what happens is you have to balance uh, the, the mom and pops, okay? I'm, I'm a little partial to mom and pops because that's where, we, that's where I grew up in, okay? But you also have to have the franchises, whether it's Olive Garden, uh, and when someone told me, Mayor, you're really doing well. We now have three donut shops here, so I'm going to, that was, that was a good test. But anyway, that's the balancing act. I'm trying to give you the variety that you need. Uh, you have a great uh, sushi place right across the street over here with the Korean family uh, at, the, at the multimodal center. So I think, I think what you're seeing is exactly what I've been saying for a while, is that over the last eight years, we, we understand what you need, we look at what you need, we look at the end game, and we try to accommodate that from a job standpoint, from a, the amenity standpoint, whether it's bicycle and hike trails, whether it's uh, culinary uh, variety, everything that, that, that you guys like, because what you want to do is, is it's not where, uh, I want to decide I want to live in Brownsville, but I'm going to make Brownsville the community that I want to be in. So that's what we got. Thank you. Mr. Mendez, same question. Thanks. Um, I didn't know we had three donut shops, but I don't think Dr. Gallo's going to really like that too much, <laughs> knowing that there's three donut shops here. Um, that might contribute to some of the health issues we have, but regardless, uh, I'm really, I'm really, uh, this question is, is something that, that really is, is a little bit near to me because uh, I'm really excited about some of the things we've seen. Uh, a lot of the things that we've seen happening, uh, for example, downtown. Uh, downtown to me is the, the place uh, where people can come, open a business, and do something a little bit different, and, and do something that, that's different. Uh, caters to a different audience. A lot of younger, a lot of younger people. Uh, when I, I did something crazy in 2010, and that was I purchased a building downtown, and I was one of the first people who went down there, thinking there's something here, and there, and if we do this right, people are going to come, and and people are going to want to visit because it's so unique, and it's it's a space that tells our history, and and downtown Brownsville, 
is has been there since the beginning. The market square has been there since the beginning. Uh, you know, the you're getting a little bit of a history lesson here too. But but market square really is where where Brownsville started, where everything everything kind of grew out of, right? So um, I think you see that the younger people uh, and really everybody. One thing that that the restaurant I did downtown has been able to do is we've actually started bringing people from uh, from McAllen down to Brownsville. We brought people from Harlingen down to Brownsville. So it's really about creating a destination, making Brownsville the place that other people want to come and the place that, that students that leave or younger people that leave want to come back to. And that's something that, that's really been a missing component in the city for a while. But I, I'm a, a firm believer that, that if you build it, they will come or they will come back. And uh, for me, the city itself can help that just by, by um, not making it so difficult to want to do that, but I, I'm really proud of what we've done, and I'm and, and I'm going to continue to do that work regardless of whether I get elected or not. So I'm excited, and, and better things are coming. Thank you. Moving on to our, our next question on the side of the aisle. Uh, yes, my question is for every single one of you. Uh, what sets you apart from every single other candidate, or from your other candidates? We will start with Mr. Martinez. What distinguishes, um, I think, my candidacy is it's, um, it's a proven product. Uh, first of all, um, when we talk about being a full-time mayor, I don't think you can do anything less than being a full-time mayor. You realize that this job uh, is not, doesn't come with a salary, and so I think some of the things that have to be addressed are how do you get someone who uh, may have not the financial uh, security our independence that one attains hopefully by the end of you know someone's career and so uh, what's distinguishing about this is that first of all it has been a full-time job over the last eight years the second thing is we've got things accomplished we not only dream we do uh, when we talk about the market square you know you can't do it without infrastructure so there was a lot of there's probably about 2.5 million dollars of, of infrastructure that was put into that if you notice, we've gone underground with the utilities. We've got fiber optic under there. Um, the bus station, of course, was ready to be moved, so we were able to do something really positive uh, by doing what we're doing. And that allows the businesses around there to grow. And we appreciate everybody who is in there. Um, back in 1990-something, you know, in the early 90s, I actually did the restoration of the old jail uh, for my law office. I've been a lawyer for a long time, now my son who's a lawyer as well, is, is in that particular building. So the restoration in the downtown area, plus we also have some other properties down there that we're going to continue to do. But don't forget your past, live in the, in the present, and plan for the future. So those are the things that I do as a mayor and have done for eight years and something I would like to continue to do. So that's what distinguishes me. Mr. Mendez, same question. Thank you. Um, I think what distinguishes me is pretty obvious. I'm, I'm the youngest one here, even though I'm the only one with white hairs in his beard. Uh, but but my, my youth, I think, is, is uh, it's an advantage because I'm, I'm a better able to, I'm, I'm kind of on the ground a little bit more, I'm better able to, to understand what the needs of this community are and where it is it going to be. Uh, I also have uh, uh, another gift, which is I listen, and I make decisions after I've been able to look at everything uh, kind of digest it and then make the best decision possible. Uh, I've, I have a record myself, and, and interestingly, I've actually been the person who's up here that's been an elected official the longest. I've, I've been an elected official for nine years now, and my record also speaks for itself. Like I said earlier, when when um, when the college when I first got elected to TSC, we had some issues, and during that time, like I said, we've lowered the tuition to make it more accessible, more affordable for you. Not only that, but we actually have an all-time high enrollment right now. And this college is growing. In the last uh, three years, other colleges have grown at a rate of about 2.3%, somewhere between 2 and 3%. We've grown at 40%. What does that mean? That means that there's more opportunities for you, and that means that the city is going gonna, is gonna to see the benefits of that. Um, I, really, I really, really believe that I've been down in the trenches with you. I've lived it. I've seen it. I've had clients that have lived it. And... And I know how it, what it's going to take, and I'm ready to put in the work to actually get out there and do it. Um, you know, I don't I don't see that that um, that the city's grown where we want to grow. I don't think that it's going where we want to go. And you need somebody that has a vision and that's actually going to going to go out there and do it. 
I've put my money where my mouth is. I've actually, uh, if nobody else has, in the past has stepped up, I'm the person that comes in and steps up because it has to be done. And, and I kind of see that same, same thing happening here. There's things that need to be done. There's thing, things that need to be fixed. Nobody else is going to step up with my skill set, so I'm doing it, and, and I'm ready for it. Mr. Kabler, same question. Well, as, as far as age goes, uh, I believe some people get older faster than others. And, uh, you want to play basketball or something? I'm, I'm ready to go. Uh, I, I have... Uh, <laughs> I have prepared myself for this. I worked at, I was a public servant, I was a police officer for 24 years, and then I went to City Hall, uh, and I have worked for the citizens of Brownsville on a daily basis for almost 40 years. I understand how to get things done. I am prepared to do so, and I will do so. I believe that it's our responsibility to work with students, to work with parents, to work with neighborhoods, to work with all viable entities well, and organizations to achieve, not for us, but for the community, for our people. Our people are the greatest asset that we have in Brownsville. It's them that we owe everything we got to. It's easy to critique when you haven't been there, when you haven't done this or that. I have. If we made a mistake, Faith tells us you make a mistake, you learn from it, and you continue on the path of doing good for our city and our people. I, that's what I want to do, and that's what I will do, if elected or not elected. I'm a Brownsville resident, have always been here, will always be here. I will not accept a job anywhere else in this country or this community or this, country, or this part of the world because I'm going to be here, and uh, I want to help. And I have a heart, and my heart is Brownsville. Uh, hi. Uh, what are you doing? To, what will you do for all candidates? What will you all do to address the in fixing the roads that we have here in our city, as well as maintaining a clean environment? Our first question will go to Mr. Mendes first. Okay, as far as the roads, uh, I've, I've thought about this for a while, and that's something that every citizen of Brownsville has an issue with. And it's come up continuously throughout our lives. It's going to continue to happen at some point. But I think the what I've come up with is every city commissioner needs to meet with their district, have a meeting every few months, and part of that meeting is going to be prioritizing a street paving and drainage improvement plan. So each commissioner should be responsible for their own district, and each commissioner should be in their own district trying to figure out what the issues are. And amongst those is going to be street paving and improvements. So my thoughts are each commissioner goes out, meets with their district, gets a priority list, figures out what, what exactly needs to be done and how important it is to, to the constituents. Then the commission sits down, has a workshop, and everybody comes in, talks about the issues, and prioritizes that plan to where the city has itself a drainage improvement and street paving plan and you just start knocking them off one, one after the other, right? So you kind of approach it that way, just very fundamental, very common sense. Uh, on the environment issue, we are, uh, we've been a, a pretty clean city. We've been very fortunate we've been a pretty clean city. There are some things that are coming into the city that do concern me that, that may affect that. Uh, we have, we're very fortunate to have uh, a lot of wildlife down, down in Brownsville and down in this community, and I think it's up to us to try and protect that. I've um, been pushing for uh, more parks. I've been pushing to establish another national park in Brownsville, uh, the Fort Brown uh, Golf Course. There is an opportunity there, and I've been pushing for it to become a national park. If we can do that, then um, there's already quite a bit of, a, of an environmental footprint there and a lot of wildlife. I grew up there as a kid. I played a lot of golf there. Uh, it has a natural environment, and there's a lot of animals that are there, and we just need to protect those. Uh, as, a, as a commission, when we make decisions, we need to make the decisions that are best for the city and uh, that make sure that we're leaving this city in, in the hands of the future generations. It's a clean city, it's a productive uh, city, and it's an active city. Thank you. The next question would be for Mr. Kaplan. Same question. Same question. Years ago, we, uh, we initiated programs and we saw that we had 700 miles of city that we had to be responsible for as far as maintaining and getting uh, done. Maintenance is the big, big 
question. Are the streets that we have already repaired been maintained? And if not, shame on us, because we're supposed to take care of what we repair. Uh, reconstruction of a road uh, five or six years ago was a million dollars per mile. Uh, if you don't take care of that, you have to reconstruct the whole street again, instead of maintaining it a fraction of the cost. Uh, if that's not being done, and I see that there is issues, uh, whenever you have rains and things like that, these streets are going to be deteriorating. You need to go maintain these. We have made these programs in place. Uh, I've been gone a few years. That's something you, we need to look at. Parks and things like that, first impression of the city, we have great parks. Uh, we have the sports park, which is, has continues to be critiqued, but we need to continue the phases of the sports park, in my opinion, to assure that we don't have dust bowls and things like that out there because there is a lot of open land. Uh, and we have great teams, great, great athletes participating in sports, young people uh, that, that need a, a complex, uh, a little league complex and things like that. But as far as street goes, we, have, we should have a good handle on it. Uh, obviously, we need to start working with contractors and things like that to get some of the streets done because we rely on our people. Our people can do it, but they'll be stuck in a road for a long, long time and the maintenance programs are not being done. So uh, we need to work in cooperation and team up with contractors and our people to continuously be observing and maintaining our roads. Mr. Martinez, same question. Um, with reference to roads, uh, I invite you to take a look at our city meeting of last night. Um, if you want to get to the root cause of why you're having the uh, problems that you're having with some of the streets, uh, it's a shortage of money, um, and, and what happens is, what was explained to us in, in, in a consultant fashion was the necessity to do more industrial development so that you get a higher return on your investment. So right now what you're, what you're doing is, uh, because of the way it has been set up for decades, um, there will be a deficit as to what your money is going to go to with regards to be between police, fire, and roads. So you need to change your culture and you need to change your vision. Uh, and I invite you to take a look at what was said uh, in the meeting last night, uh, because I think everybody uh, totally understood and agreed what needs to be done uh, besides just maintenance as was, was spoken to right now. Uh, the second thing with regards to uh, uh, the greening of, of, of Brownsville, I invite you to do two things. The first thing is to take a look at what uh, where your source of uh, energy is coming from, and before uh, now, you had about 30% was coal driven. Uh, that plant has been closed down or is in the process of being closed down. Uh, we are now investing about 19 to 20% on pure wind. Um, we are, like the airport that's being built, is going to be LEED certified. Uh, we've just agreed to do five buses that are electric uh, slash diesel hybrids. Um, those are the things that make meaningful progress towards us. Your hike and bike trails, you get the carbon footprint off and you don't have as many cars on the road, which eliminates not only the road maintenance, but also eliminates a lot of that carbon. So, Brownsville is going in the right direction and we need to keep moving it forward. Thank you. Unfortunately, that is all the time we have for questions. We will now conclude for closing statements. As a reminder to the candidates, each a candidate will have two minutes for their closing statement. We will proceed with closing statements in reverse alphabetical order. Our first candidate is Mr. Trey Mendez. That went pretty quick. Um, I just want to thank everybody for being here. I think over the last uh, 45 minutes or so, you've had an opportunity to hear the candidates and see what it is that they're about. Uh, I think it's pretty clear who had the actual answers and solutions to the questions and, um, and where that rhetoric was. But I think that um, for, my, for me, like I said, this candidacy is not about me. And, and it's, it's about this city and where we want it to go. And over the last several years, Candidates take students for granted because they say students don't vote, don't worry about it, we're not gonna pay attention to students. Well, actually students do vote. And, and why should you vote? Because this election matters to you because it gets to set the direction of where it is you wanna go. Where do you want Brownsville to be? Do we want it to be a progressive city, a clean city? Do we want it to be active? Do we want it to be a city that grows economically, that brings jobs, brings people back? 
uh, from other cities. Uh, is it going to be a Brownsville that we're all proud of? Is it going to be a Brownsville that people are proud to come to, that businesses are proud to come to, and that we're all happy to live in? So for me, it's, it's really about, about all of you and what it is that, we're, that we want to do for this city. Um, I've, I've lived my whole life here. The only time I left was, was to go to law school in Austin. And, and I came back, and I've been fortunate to come back and, and really uh, reinvest in this city and, and do the things that nobody else was doing because I felt that it needed to be done. So the, the last thing I'll leave you with is this. You've heard us all. You've, you've gotten to see an opportunity to see how we respond, see our knowledge on the issues. And I think the, the answer is pretty clear. I'm asking for your vote, and I'm asking for you to come out starting next Monday. Come out, do your part, and let's, let's, do, this, the, let's do what Brownsville needs, and let's bring in new leadership, somebody with vision, and somebody with the actual ability to implement that vision, not just tell you all the things that need to be done without having a way that they're going to do it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mendez. Our next candidate is Tony Martinez. I'll finish like I started. Thank you for being here. Um, you know, I, I, I understand challenges and I understand challengers. Uh, and I understand critics and I understand um, fairness. Uh, in all fairness, it's that uh, over the last eight years, we've taken Brownsville in a wonderful direction. Uh, you can't, you know, you can't build Rome overnight. But I tell you what, with the audience that we have here, what you can do is you can help expedite and help continue to move forward. So as I stand here before you, I stand very, very proud and humbled because what happened is not only have I had the opportunity to serve you, I think we've done it quite well. We've been able to navigate with a commission uh, to get us the things that we think are important for you and for all citizens of Brownsville, not any special interest groups, not taking anything on an emotional basis, but on a very, very calculated way, trying to get you to move Brownsville forward for the benefit of one and all. So with that being said, I do invite you to come to my website, to please volunteer, to please ask us to do and continue to do the things that we have done quite well over the last eight years. I'm not bringing you rhetoric, I'm not bringing you promises, I'm bringing you results. So in that vein, I, I humbly ask for your vote. I, vote, I humbly ask for the vote of your friends and your families, um, and if you like what you've seen, and you like SpaceX, and you like a new airport, and you like a rest, you know, restored downtown, and restored Rosacas, and elimination of coal plants, etc., Please, please support us to continue this going forward. And don't ask for promises or anything else that hasn't been proven. But prove, but prove to yourself and to your family that you deserve it to yourself and you owe it to yourself to get the very best. And God willing, we'll do it together. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Mr. Martinez. Our last candidate is Charlie Cap. Thank you, and uh, I want to thank the Student Government Association for having us here. Uh, one of the things that uh, we say in relation to students, and you know, a lot of, I know a lot of the students here because I grew up with your parents, so I do know that you vote. And I know that you're going to vote with a, in a wise, capable uh, manner, because you are not just the future leaders of Brownsville, you are the current leaders of Brownsville as well. You have proven yourselves by having this presentation, by asking these questions that we need to answer to, uh, you have proven to us that you are our leaders of today and tomorrow. Uh, I want to just promise you one thing, that I want to be a mayor that is visible, that is with you on a daily basis, that sits down with you, that visits our neighborhoods on a continuous basis, that has a great relationship with entities throughout the valley that I can get things done. I don't argue with people to uh, upset them, but I will be firm in saying Brownsville needs this, need, Brownsville needs that. And if I go to a location and I ask for $10 and I get three, I want to thank them and say thank you very much. You know why? They're going to call me back next week. I I'm a person that likes to sit down with groups, organizations, have a good time with them, and bring all the viable 
assets to our city that we can get. And you, as students, are part of that. We need to understand the true definition of transparency. And transparency is that you understand what we're doing on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, that you know where we come from, that you know where we are. Because it's important for you to know what your mayor or commission are doing to make this the city it should be, number one in the country. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kabler. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our mayoral candidate open forum by the Student Government Association of Texas Southmost College. On behalf of the SJA, we would like to thank everyone who attended today. We would like to especially thank our candidates for taking the time out of their busy schedule to answer our questions and hear what the student body has to say. As a reminder to everybody in the audience, on April 22nd through April 30th, the city of Brownsville um, will have its early voting and its uh, election day would be on May 5th. I hope you guys enjoyed our forum and this concludes our forum. Thank you guys, have a good day.